Good morning. It is uh, Monday, November the 2nd. It uh, is the beginning of a whole new month. And, uh, you know, I guess of note, it's the day before Election Day. So maybe more important than ever for us to find our way to be closer to God. I'm going to read to you today from Romans. Let's see how that uh, fits into our our thinking and our plans. It's in the sixth verse, sixth chapter, starting with the third verse. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. <clears throat> For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was, self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But, we, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. I guess it's like this. Every single day you have a choice. You can dwell and live into the past or you can choose to live into the future. If you've ever been to church with us at Hope on Saturday night, we have a movie we play and it says, uh, one of the things it says is we're always, we're all broken people. We're putting ourselves back together. And another thing it says is, it's not important where you've been, but it's where you're going. I think so many times we weigh and measure today based upon the past instead of basing it upon where we're headed. I know over my life I have driven from Pasadena or Beaumont or Arlington to Boulder, Colorado, a number of times. Uh, probably can't even count how many. And whichever way you go, that uh, the way we go usually is up 287. So the, 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 the traveling from Fort Worth to Amarillo is some of the most boring, uh, non-scenic, uh, terrain that you could ever travel on. It's not that it's ugly. It's just non-changing. Now, you don't realize it because you're climbing up onto the cap rock the whole time. A little bit at a time, you're getting higher and higher. But as a young person, and even as a much older person making that drive, There's always this, this goal about, can I just get to the next town? Wichita Falls, Kiwana, Amarillo, Dumas, Texline, which is where my dad was born. Leaving Texline and going toward Colorado through New Mexico, you just wish you could see something and then poof, out of nowhere almost, comes what appears to be a mountain. It's a place called Capulin Mountain. It's a ancient old volcano you can drive there and I guess you could even walk down into the to the uh, crater when I was young and as my kids were young, it was so exciting to get to see something that looked like a mountain when we we're on the way to the mountains if we didn't know better we'd think that was it back on the road and finally to Raton Pass and into Colorado
And then come the mountains. My point is that, that we can't always see what's in front of us. But because of the scriptures, we can know who holds us in his hand. We can know that he has better things planned for us. That there's something always coming up ahead. The worst that we can imagine for ourselves can lead us to the best that God has to offer. You can make examples of people that go to prison and get saved, those that go to prison and help save others. Charles Colson, who started the prison ministry while he was in prison, or as a result of having been in prison. I'm just saying that, that the journey is what's important. What's behind you got you here. You know, in my case, uh, the, my traveling over these years has been, you know, a, a 62 Comet and a 64 Fairlane and a 70, a 68 Chevrolet. And a, anyway, I've had all these modes of travel and they were all cool. And at one point in time, they were the greatest thing ever. When in reality, not any of them have the comfort and features that my current transportation has, I would have never thought it. We just cannot continue to live hoping things will return to the way they were. And that may be even more true now that we've gone through this pandemic. The thing is, we don't know what it was like for those people back in 1918 when they had the flu epidemic how much their lives changed, how many things changed, or how many things should have remained changed. Maybe we should have been more diligent over these years of hygiene and cleanliness. But we can't undo what we've done. You can't relive where you've been. You can't go back no matter how many days you want to think about it, dwell on it. It's fun to spend a few minutes thinking about how you fell in love with that first boyfriend or girlfriend, but you can't go back to that. Even if you found them, they wouldn't be like they are now. We have a future. We have a future with Christ. It's not futile, it's not hopeless, it's not left out. It's real. Don't get so caught up in what was, what even what is today that you miss what's coming. Don't miss the ways that God is finding and looking and seeking to be a part of your life. Don't give up on God. Because let me tell you, friends, God hasn't given up on you. I never thought that I would be doing daily devotionals on YouTube. Didn't know much about YouTube channels. I never thought that I'd be a pastor of a church that has made so much difference in so many people's lives. I never understood the power of just turning it over to God. I was lucky. I had a lot of good experiences. I was able to manage things. But as long as I tried to manage them, then they were unmanageable. It's when I let go and began to work in concert with what I perceived to be the will of God that my life changed. I hope that for all of you, that we can understand the breadth, the depth, the height, the width of God's love, the difference it can make to trust God to look at our problems through God instead of God in the distance through our problems. 
It's a great day to be hopeful. Hopeful for what happens tomorrow and next week, the rest of this year, and hopeful for the days ahead. When every day we wake up and know that Jesus Christ is King. Friends, these are my thoughts for today. Sometimes they're not always connected together. They're just thoughts. Hopefully they'll help you get through your day. Let's all give a few minutes of each day to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we start off in the morning just thinking about you. Thinking about how we met you and how you've changed our lives and what a difference it makes to have you as King of Kings. So let these few minutes be a guidepost for us, an anchor, a way to realize that every day we start the day thinking about our future with you. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. You know, I hope you guys have a great day today. It's going to be a beautiful day in Southeast Texas and Southeast Harris County. Looking forward to it. God bless.